What's the difference between this print versus this print? The one on the left is completely flat with no pattern, while the one on the right does. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create your own patterns like this in Fusion 360. That way you can take this onto your own projects and recreate this into your own designs. So with that said, let's get started. Now, I want you to imagine if some of your favorite products didn't come with its own unique features that gave it its identity. For example, what if an iPhone didn't have curved edges, but was actually a square? Or if filament spools came in the shape of a square instead of a circle? Now, that wouldn't make sense, wouldn't it? Now, regardless of what you consider useful features or features purely for aesthetic reasons, you'll typically find products with features that either benefit its utility and its usefulness, or purely just to make the product look cooler. And what I wanna do in today's video is show you how to create your own pattern-like features within Fusion 360. That way you can implement them into your own 3D printable designs and really make cool projects. So with that said, let's jump right into my computer and get started. Okay, so here on your screen, you should see the file or the design for the storage box that I showed you early on in the video. And what I wanna do here is show you a brief overview of this and the patterns that I used to create this design and exactly how to create this design within Fusion. Now the reason why I'm showing you this design here within Fusion is to give you an overall idea. For example, instead of just using in creating tutorials around ideas or theories on making it, Rather, I'd rather show you guys an actual product with these features because it's much easier to conceptualize. And when it comes to 3D printable projects, you're gonna be taking these features from Fusion into an actual design, which needs to function or work or serve some sort of utility. And by showing you a final product that was 3D printed and made within Fusion, it gives you guys a little bit more of an understanding on why it makes features like this so important. So the very first thing I want to go over is I want you guys to conceptualize exactly what this is. So if you were to really think about this and its base feature, features. This crate on its own is essentially just a box. So if I were to go back within the timeline, so just ignore whatever that's going on here, you can see that back in this timeline, it's essentially just a box and you really have three main features, which is the base, which is the side, and which is the front. Now I'm not going to be going over the whole concept of the design itself, but rather than the idea of how simple the design is and why using features like how we mentioned earlier gives it more of an identity and makes it look a lot better. So the main purpose here is to show you guys how to create patterns like this within your designs because without this pattern, it would look a lot more simple and it would not give it that unique pattern how we saw um, early on in the video if that makes sense. So I really want you to think about this, that it's a giant square or a giant rectangle and all it has is these patterns. So you create one sketch here and then you take this along the X axis and as well as the Y axis. And it gives it kind of more of an authentic look like a crate look or more of a um, more of a CAD to actual product idea, if that makes sense. And this is what gives it its identity or its crate like features, if that makes sense. And for additional purposes, it also serves the case that it could also save filament usage. So instead of just printing a whole flat surface, it could also save filament usage because you're not using filament to fill up those gaps, if that makes sense. So in some cases, sure, it could be useful for saving filament, but it's probably more or less negligible. I was aiming more for the aesthetic look of it as well. So the main thing I want you guys to really think about is that these are just rectangles here that were added with fillets. And then using the pattern, the rectangular pattern feature within Fusion, we take that feature here and just drag this across to this other side here. In order to create that mirror effect here, we have construction plane in which we mirror this, these features here onto the other side, which gives it this entire look. So what I wanna do now is switch over into how to actually design this, and that way you can take this onto your own projects. One additional thing I forgot to mention is that I'll be working within inches and not millimeters, so feel free to change that within the document settings section. So here we are in a completely blank canvas, and what we're gonna do now is create some patterns and create some design examples, that way you guys can take this along with you to create this in your own designs. So the very first thing here, if you'd like to follow along, is I'm going to create a sketch, and I'm gonna be sketching on the top plane here. From here, I'm gonna select create, rectangle, center rectangle, drag this out, and I would say maybe seven by five. From here, finish sketch, press E on your keyboard, select the plane or the sketch we just created, drag this up to about 0.2, and then there you go. 
From here, you should have a completely flat rectangle that looks like this. And then now we are ready to begin the process of actually creating this design. Now, the very first thing I want to do here is create another sketch. So like that plane or the plane or the face that where we created that new sketch or the new extrude. Press L on our keyboard, drag this down to the very edge. And you're, you would know you're doing it right if you have a triangle that appears, which is the very center of that rectangle here. From here, I'm going to select this line here, construction. And now you should see that this line here is selected as a construction plane. It just helps us with reference and kind of gives us more of a visual look on what we're exactly we're sketching. So once we created that line for our design here, the next thing we need to do is create that rectangle for our design. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. Just start creating a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then there you go. Now we're going to use some of the constraint features in order to fix this up. So I'm going to go here into parallel. Select this here, select this here. So these are parallel, select this line and this line. And now this is parallel. One additional thing I want to do here is to make sure that this is a rectangle. So I'm press D on my keyboard, select this edge here and this edge here. And I'm going to type in 90 degrees. For some of you, it may automatically become 90 degrees, but most of you may not be since we were just kind of lazy with the design process. But now we have our fully constrained rectangle that it's a rectangle regardless of what we do to it. The next thing is to create some sort of dimension to this. So I'm going to press D on my keyboard, drag this out, type in one inch, press D on my keyboard, drag this out, say 0.4. And then there we go. The next thing we're going to do here is press S on our keyboard, type in F, select this sketch fillet option here, go around the entire sketch that we designed and add a fillet to the entirety of it as well. Now you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So we pretty much have the overall design of our rectangle. The next thing we need to do here is make sure to constrain it to the rectangle of our entire design. So I'm gonna press L on my keyboard. I'm gonna look for the very center of this option here. So there is the triangle that pops up, drag this out. Same exact thing here. So I look for our triangle, drag this out. And there we go. One additional thing we're gonna do here is to make these two sides equal. So I'm gonna select the equal constraint, select this, select that. And now everything is completely equal and constrained. So almost everything is constrained now. You don't have to constrain everything, but this is the general idea. The next thing we do here is press E on our keyboard, drag this out, extend type to object. Okay, and there we go. Now we have our base feature or design. So this is the rough draft of our entire design, if that makes sense. And what I want you guys to know is that now that we completed this, now we need to drag this up along the Y axis and along the X axis as well. And once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and mirror this exact design all the way to the other side. That way we get that crate like design or features or look onto this rough draft here. So what I'm gonna do now is press S on my keyboard, type in pattern, rectangular pattern. And from here, there are a couple of options. So the first is type. So we're just gonna stick to rectangular pattern. The second is object type. Now we could use faces or features, but for this example, I'm going to use features. And a feature is essentially what is shown on the timeline, like extrusion, like extruding, like shelling, like creating a hole. That's a feature type uh, example. So what we do, select that feature there, select our axis, which is this line here, and as well as this line here. And if you were to drag this out, you can see that now we have multiple extruded parts within that region. Now I could drag this out to the other side, but don't worry about that just yet. So go back to pattern, select my features, axis, now I'm gonna just drag this out to, let's just say two by three. And voila, now we have our extruded sketch or our extruded sketch now turned into a feature. And what we're gonna do now is also mirror this to the other side. So what we're gonna do now is mirror these features onto the other side. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard, type in mirror, select features. Now we're gonna select the first initial feature or the first initial extrude 
in the rectangular pattern. And the reason why is because if you just only select rectangular pattern, it's not going to include the initial extruded part. So you want to select this one as well. So you can press control on your keyboard and it'll select both of them. From here, select mirror plane, use your origin, select OK. And now you have the exact same pattern or features as created within this crate design. And the best part about this pattern is that not only can you recreate this for this rectangle that we made, meaning that this uh, rectangle, this also works with circles, with uh, parallelograms, this works with basically anything you'd want to create. And the whole purpose of this video is how to create a pattern around something like this, if that makes sense. One additional note I want to add to this video is the concept of creating a parametric pattern, meaning that, for example, if we wanted to create a rectangle, that if we were to change the size of this rectangle, that these features here will also change along with it. So let's just say if this rectangle was made larger, that automatically the computer or Fusion 360 would make this longer according with that, if that makes sense. So basically parametric. Now you can absolutely do that, but the whole purpose of this video is kind of give you a baseline on how to create features like this. Now, in order to create a parametric pattern, that's an entirely different concept on its own because it requires a little bit more of an equation process, meaning that there's quite a few numbers that you'll need to plug into this. Additionally, most of the process or most of the things that you set up here will have to be constrained from the very start in order to make sure that everything works around with each other. So that way, for example, if I were to scale this rectangle larger, that way it creates more rows and columns along with it. And if I were to also scale this down, it would also remove those columns and rows. That way it makes more sense. And that way everything's parametric. That would be a video for another time, of course, since that does take quite a bit of time to make and set up. But I wanted to give you guys a general idea of how to create patterns within Fusion 360. So with that said, guys, I hope you guys had enjoyed today's video. If you guys found it informative, insightful, or found some golden nuggets within this video itself, feel free to drop a comment down below, letting me know what you found insightful, as well as if you guys have any questions or something that I should be covering in this video or maybe in future videos i'd love to read your comments and to learn more exactly what you guys want to watch that way i can show you guys how to make it and to take this for your own 3d printed projects if you guys want to check out my patreon or my stl files there'll be a link down below where you can check it out if you'd like to support the channel i would greatly appreciate it so with that said this is brandon signing out see you guys in the next one peace